So here is the first thing that you're likely to encounter after you've boarded the life raft and you'll get in settled in and waiting to be rescued. Seasickness tablets. It's very important that you take seasickness tablets as soon as you get in the life raft. Many people get seasick and if you are sick or vomit in a life raft or even over the side of the life raft, not only are you going to dehydrate, your morale is also going to sink, you're not going to be feeling very well and for the rest of the passengers in the life raft they probably don't really want to smell your vomit, especially if it's in the life raft, whilst they're waiting to be rescued. So the life raft leader, perhaps a deck officer, will be handing out these seasickness tablets immediately. I actually worked on super yachts and container ships as a marine engineer and I can tell you that I always got seasick, I didn't particularly like it and it can take two to three days to get over this seasickness. You most likely don't have that luxury when you're in a life raft of just waiting it out, so it's important you take the seasickness tablets. And if it makes you feel better, Horatio Nelson, one of the greatest admirals that ever sailed for the British Royal Navy, he also got seasick as well. Aside from our anti-seasickness pills or tablets, we've got a buoyant baler, Notice that it is buoyant, that means if you drop it over the side, it's going to float and you can pick it back up again. Essentially what you're going to do is just scoop water into here and then you will bail out the water out of the life raft and put it back into the sea where it belongs. This is very important because if you open up the entrance of the life raft and a big wave comes in, you've got to get all of that salt water back out again and the baler is what you're going to use to do that. The next item or items are the buoyant paddles. Once again, they float, so if you drop them, they're going to remain on the surface of the water and you can pick them up again. These are essentially for maneuvering the life raft short distances. They're also your main form of propulsion. If you see an island off in the distance, you're going to want to be able to paddle towards it. And it's these paddles that will allow you to do that. The alternative is, although I wouldn't recommend it because you're always trying to stay dry, jump in the water and have a few people paddle and push the life raft in the direction of wherever you want to go. But once again, the goal is always to stay as dry as possible whenever you're in a life raft. We've got a rescue coit. I don't know why it's called a coit, but its purpose is actually to be thrown to someone in the water. They will then grab it with their hand or maybe slide it up their arm just underneath the armpit and then someone can pull them back to the life raft. You'll actually attach this end of the line here to the life raft and then you'll pull them to the life raft. So it's a way of bringing people over to the life raft without you needing to get in the water and drag them over. A word of warning here, if you're a deck officer, you most likely know that this is called a coit. If you're a marine engineer or a passenger, maybe a yacht or a cruise ship, you're not going to know what a coit is, or at least I didn't know what one was. So be prepared to have some creative names attached to this if someone's trying to have it thrown to them, such as throw me the donut thing, throw me the big o-ring, and stuff like that. I think the engineers actually used to call it the big o-ring thing, which is not really the most technical name. We've got an electric torch. The torch is for signaling purposes. It's not for shining inside the life raft or for reading or anything like that. The reason for this is because you want to conserve the batteries as much as possible. You've got some emergency drinking water. This is very important. Each person on board will be allocated a certain allowance of how much water they can drink per day. In addition to that, you've also got some food rations and the amount of food that each person receives per day will also be rationed. The reason being, you just don't know how long it's going to take for people to find you. So you're rationing all of the resources you have on board. You've got a first aid kit. The first aid kit carries the usual things you might expect in a first aid kit. Plasters, bandages, antiseptic wipes, and things like that. There may be no doctors or hospitals nearby, especially out in the middle of the ocean. So it's important little cuts get disinfected and remain clean because you don't really want them to become infected, which complicates things quite a lot. There's also a graduated drinking vessel. 
The graduated bit simply means that we've got markings on the side that indicate how much liquid is within the container. There are also handheld flares. There will be six of these on board and they form part of the pyrotechnics that the life raft carries. The six handheld flares are there so that you can signal to a rescuer and help them locate your position. You'll normally do this if you see them and they don't see you. At night time, they're quite easy to spot. In the daytime, they're not as easy to spot, although you can use them anyway. Remember that it's a lot easier for you to keep a lookout for a ship or an aircraft than it is for an aircraft to spot you or a ship to spot you. So it's important that you signal and try to get their intention and that's what these flares are for. You've also got some parachute signal rockets or rocket flares. You'll have four of these. These are essentially like handheld flares, but instead of holding them in your hand and waving them back and forth, you'll shoot the flare up into the air. It looks a little bit like firework. The only difference being it's very bright. It will slowly come back down due to gravity. And the whole time it's falling down, you'll see this bright red light, which again shows people where you are and that you're nearby. The good thing about rocket flares is people can spot you from 20 kilometers away or more because that flare is going to shoot straight up into the air well above any waves. People will be able to see it from a distance and they'll be able to head in your direction and hopefully find you and save you. When they're looking for you, they may use a radar. The life raft itself is not ideal. They won't be able to see you on the radar or it's highly unlikely. So you'll use a radar reflector You'll position this ideally on top of the life raft or at the highest point, And this will increase the likelihood that you will show up on a radar screen. You will only show up as a small dot. But if it's an unmarked dot and people are looking for you, they're likely to head in that direction and try and find you. It's just another device to make finding you a lot easier. And that's because the ocean is simply huge. We've got a sea anchor. You'll put this in the water to stop the life raft rotating so much. It will actually help to smooth the transit of the life raft so you're not changing direction so quickly, which might be quite uncomfortable. And it will also reduce the rate at which you drift. There's a signaling mirror or a heliograph. If it's a sunny day, you can signal to a ship or a boat or an aircraft. And this twinkling light makes it much easier easier for them to spot you. We've got some smoke signals or smoke floats. You'll have two of these. When you activate one of these smoke floats, they will let off a lot of red or orange smoke. The smoke is very thick. It tends to just hang in the air, but there's a lot of it. And anyone searching for you will see a red cloud or an orange cloud bigger than the life raft. And this helps them once again spot you if they're looking for you. We've got some sponges. These are not for cleaning the inside of the life raft or soaking up seawater. They're actually for helping to gather fresh water or rainwater. I suppose you could use them for whatever purpose you want to use them for, but their original purpose is to help gather more rainwater. You've got a survival book, which you should read as soon as you enter the life raft. You've got thermal protective aids. These often look quite shiny. Sometimes they look a bit like a towel, often silver in color. They look like something David Bowie would have worn in the 80s. And you'll wrap these around anyone who's cold. Maybe they're suffering from hypothermia and this will help them stay warm. We've got a tin opener for opening the ration packs. And we've got a whistle for attracting attention. Other items that you're going to see in the life raft, depending upon the number of persons, would include a non-folding knife with a buoyant handle and some fishing tackle for catching fish.